Today I'm going to be building a new mini houseboat. We're starting the process by laying two sheets of plywood on top of each other. These are going to become the walls of the boat. And to make sure I make all the same cuts on both sides and they're symmetrical, I'm screwing them together. My idea behind this project was there were two YouTubers who challenged each other to build micro houseboats. And I think before that, I'd had the smallest houseboat at measuring at 10 feet by 5 feet. These guys clearly built smaller ones. So my goal here today is to build one even smaller. This new houseboat that I'm building here is going to measure 8 foot by 4 foot. Both of my boats have had an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. That's, uh, that's length to beam. And they have handled absolutely horrendously. I wouldn't recommend that as a good aspect ratio. It's terrible, but it's what it's going to be. So I'm having a look at right now how we're going to lay out the, the window. And we want to keep a little bit of space to the stern of the house to put a mural on. My inspiration for this project was an English canal boat. But we want to combine that with some of the local history and where I live, there's a lot of mining history. So the idea was an English canal boat that might have been a miner's cabin. It sounds preposterous, but I thought that it was funny. When you're using a circular saw to cut into a corner like that, you're not able to reach all the way to the corner. So if you see, I will cut right up to the edge and then I'll finish the cut with a handsaw to get a nice crisp edge there. Took a little bit of finagling to not cut through the sawhorse. I've done that before. I think we all have, but this time I didn't do it, and I'm very happy about that. We're going to have a look at where we're going to put this window exactly, and we're measuring it out. Got to get it right. You know what they say, cut it twice, and then it still doesn't fit. So once we lay that out, we're going to put the window back in, and we're going to start thinking about a rub rail and maybe an eyebrow. Uh, an eyebrow is going to be a piece of trim that goes around the top of the boat. We have a couple of different ideas here, and we don't go for either of them. I end up using a 1 by 2 But we do go with the longer rub rail, and that, that's a 10-foot rub rail. It's going to extend the entire length of the boat and all the way out the back, and we're going to end up mounting the motor off the end of it. I think that, that doing that is going to make for a very stiff boat. You got to be careful when you're making plunge cuts like this. If you're going to have kickback with a circular saw, it's probably going to happen when you're making a plunge cut. I go right up to the line again, but not all the way beyond, just like I did before. And we're going to finish them off with a handsaw. Get nice crisp edges. Next, we're going to test fit the window. And once I'm satisfied that the windows fit in there properly, we're going to decide that everything here is done and we're going to separate the two halves of the boat. This gives me my first chance to sort of get an idea of how big this interior space is and I am quite shocked at how small it's going to actually be. Now I'm cutting the bottom of the boat. It's just a single sheet of plywood with a little 45 degree cut on the front. When it comes time to connect these two I am going to use a 2x4 is a cleat, and we'll get lots of glue on the 2x4, lots of glue on the side of the boat, and then the two sides will be glued and screwed together, and it'll produce a nice watertight connection. In this photo, you can also see that the bits that I will use to tie up the boat are 4x4 posts that extend down into the hull and make that watertight connection between the bow and the side. With it put together now, the barge shape of the hull is absolutely obvious. This is done because it's a very stable hull. I could have gone with a pontoon boat, but it's when you get a boat as narrow as this one, it's difficult to make pontoons stable. I put the windows in and splashed some paint on it. I also like how this eyebrow around the top of the house provides some definition to the form. Next I installed the wood stove. When I put this penetration on through the top of the house, I applied lots of silicone to provide a good seal. And then I siliconed around each screw. 
I thought that it looked really sharp with the green and white. I plan to operate this boat in some very shallow waters, so I added 4x4 four four skis to the bottom so that when I touch bottom, I'm going to touch the skis before I damage the bottom of the boat. Next, I turned my attention to the interior of the boat. I think the white paint really helps brighten the space up. And there's a tradition in commercial boats of painting the decks green. So we had to go with forest green for the deck. The final step is to register it and paint some numbers on the side of the boat. All right, the project is now done. We got a couple of murals on the side of it. There's a simple gas can mount. It's tucked in with some boards. Carry a little bit of spare fuel. We got a couple of tea light holders on either side of the countertop. A small dry sink, a little lantern. And then I wanna have a theme of a miner's cabin. So I've included a horseshoe bottle opener and a horseshoe dinner bell. I think every ship needs a good bell. This one's cracked. And then I got a little hat hook right there. Simple wood stove. It's very, very cute and very lightweight, which is what I was looking for. This portion of the countertop lifts out. And then there's room to sleep in this itty bitty boat. Otherwise I'd bonk my noggin on the counter. I have a tiny tile hearth. The stove's been screwed down to the tile hearth. So when it's rocking and rolling, it stays in place. The trick with a boat this small is keeping everything lightweight. So I went with the lightest motor I could find. It's only four horsepower. Uh, I think two would even be enough. There's no room inside the boat to store the fenders because it's so tiny. So they're gonna live on the outside of the boat and just sort of bob around when I'm underway. They're tied off in two spots. They won't float away. I've got a golden poppy and a lovely mural. It was light enough two people could easily load it into my pickup truck. If you want to see this boat in action, you're going to have to subscribe because in two weeks I'll drop a video where I go on a two-day camping trip. I'll see you then.